Why did I spend nearly a quarter million dollars at a top engineering school just to leave engineering? That's a great question and one that frankly I keep asking myself. So welcome today to another episode of Amy's Existential Crisis where I will be justifying again my big life decision of leaving engineering to go into business instead. I already made one video about this but I didn't cover all the points I wanted to, I realized afterwards. And what's special about today is that actually my boyfriend Sean recently also left engineering to do more managerial non engineerial <laughs> not engineering things to say the least another one bites the dust <laughs> okay three two one wow Ta-da! please introduce yourself sean hi everyone uh, i'm sean like amy i majored in chemical engineering uh, in college and recently i transitioned out of engineering slash science and moved into project management but on the bright side, he is still in the engineering world because he's at a pharma company. To be honest, okay, I'm not happy that we are both left engineering because I love science and math. And so it just speaks to the volume of certain problems that might be within this kind of role that make it less appealing for a starting job right out of undergrad. So Sean, please explain why you recently left engineering. Because engineering, you dive into a specific problem very deeply, you run experiments, 10 times to try to, you know, find the root cause to a problem versus now doing project management. I have a lot of new projects coming and I got to um, talk to people and I got to talk to people from different functions every day. And I feel like, you know, I got to learn new things mm -hmm. on a constant basis. Very um, deja vu to my video of why I left engineering because you see it's repetitive. You felt a little stagnant, right? Yes. Now, without further ado, you have to do this when I swipe, okay? Let's go. It was at this moment he knew he fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Into the problems. Let's go. So first of all, when we go out of undergrad, I feel like there are only really two options. It's either you go into a PhD or straight into industry. And I felt like if I didn't go in... There's a third one. You can go oh. uh, unemployed. <laughs> good job, good job. <laughs> Indeed, Sean is correct. You can also go unemployed, but we assume that's not the choice most of us would pick, okay? I felt like if I didn't go into a PhD, then I would just be another engineer. And we already know that I didn't want to do a PhD because I felt like I couldn't focus on one problem for the rest of my many years. And so if I was just another engineer, then as bad as it sounds, why did I go to Caltech? That's, I feel like one of the problems of having a certain STEM degree. If it's not CS and then going straight into industry after undergrad. In fact, my manager that was at my internship at his current company, when she heard that I was going to do consulting instead of returning to the company, which they're technically supposed to like push for, right? Get interns to return. She said, wow, that's a great choice, a great path that you're going on. And and she almost said it in a very longing way, like she wished that she did that instead of doing a PhD program and now being a scientist. In fact, we realized that like these PhDs, they don't even use what they learned in research, right? For their current scientist role. Yeah, I don't I don't think they will use the specific knowledge gained from their PhD thesis. It's more like, you know, the, the usual problem solving skills mm -hmm. or, you know. Yeah, and in fact, Sean told me that at his job, there's another engineer who who, like came directly from undergrad and has technically more years of work experience in that area in this company but then they can never get to that scientist role that someone from phd directly can get even though he's actually more skilled than those phds right correct it's another issue there and related to that if you want to be a manager is that if that's your ultimate goal then it takes so many years of like butt kissing <laughs> to climb the ladder and hard work too. and hard work but it, it doesn't get as recognized as the perception of how much hard work you did let's be real because as an engineer you know you you spend you know a decade or so to climb the ladder and become engineer manager and same thing with scientists you know mm -hmm. you spend a long time before you know you manage your own little group that's why i felt like maybe i could have this process sped up by going to consulting because managing is eventually what i want to do anyway second problem is 
is what you think is actually an asset. But to me, it's a little bit of a problem because you get more and more specialized, which means that the more you're in this engineering role, you're pigeonholed into that one area, those few skills or tools that you know how to use. When people in new roles look at your resume, for example, they just want you to do the same things again because you're already good at that. You're already trained. So why risk that more time and effort, which is money, their bottom line, to train someone and do something else? Once you're specializing something, they value you and your expertise and they call you SMEs. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What are SMEs? Yeah. Subject matter experts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we need SMEs, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a lot of the engineering mm -hmm. and science areas. Again, it's all dependent on the kind of personality you have or like what you want, which is why I'm presenting like, you know, our personal experience and this will help you evaluate whether you want to go into engineering, which I thought I wanted to. It could be an asset because like Sean said, we need SMEs. You know, why do you think we have so many cool technologies now? It's because of those really, really smart people who stuck with science and engineering. And just like my dad, for example, like if that was his ultimate goal of becoming a design engineer, then those years add up for him to be very like invaluable to the company and that's what he loves at the same time so in that case it's fine to be specialized nothing to add here <laughs> i just like to echo what amy said i would just like to piggyback i'd like to piggyback off of what she said yeah, what was, was your piggyback i don't know nothing to add here period okay negative of going to business is that this guy has been using corporate lingo all the time now Finally, you don't actually really use most of what you learn in college in a job anyway. Would you say that's true? Yeah, especially the technical knowledge. I learned so much detail of thermo and derivatives. And while those are helpful and important for problem solving, as I always think like school's not directly helpful in general anyway. Okay, that's not what I meant. That's not that's not what I meant. Let me rephrase this. So kids complain all the time, like, when am I ever gonna use calculus in my job? Even if they're gonna become a computer scientist. Well, the problem solving skills and that and getting awareness of all the different subjects is important and helpful. But in general, you're not gonna use specifically all the detailed stuff in chemical engineering that you think you would use in a chemical engineering job. <sighs> which is something that a lot of people actually don't realize until they're actually in a job. So it's good to keep that in mind because I knew and realized I wouldn't use what I learned at Caltech anyway because I wanted to go into industry. Then I was like, why not go all in and completely not use anything I'm going to do? And so I felt more justified in choosing consulting, which is farther away. As sad as it is, I realized that science is not valued enough by society, in my opinion, and from what I see. It's a very important thing. It helps the world advance. But I think when you say value and you mean you don't get paid enough. Yeah, monetary value. Yeah, because at the end of the day, um, everyone is, you know, for their own uh, interest and their own bottom line, which is, I think for most people, monetary compensation, unfortunately, you know, a lot of the engineers and scientists who mm -hmm. specialize, it takes them, you know, a long, long time to get to a higher salary mm -hmm. versus, you know, you're doing something different like consulting or business. You even see that in doctors, which is kind of sad because doctors are so essential, obviously, but then they have so many years of schooling and then you of student debt that they rack up that aspect kind of is a deterrent i think for mm -hmm. some people and friends who have talked to any years of residency where mm -hmm. when they get paid um, mm -hmm. yeah very low yeah and like you compare that to business people and that's just the reality of the world i don't know exactly what there is to change that but because i feel like in general science and engineering isn't valued enough at one point you kind of have to think about whether you want to have a career or job for your benefit because you have one life or you want to serve the greater good that's why i really admire those people who are staying in science and engineering i kind of feel bad <laughs> on a daily basis that i'm like creating value adding value not even creating value and making slides yeah. okay in science also discovery doesn't even correlate directly to technological advances, which is why there's not that money always there. Yeah, because the discovery might be on a small scale, but then mm -hmm. when you try to scale up and commercialize and you know introduce it to everyday life and mm -hmm. uh, you know into households, it might take a lot you know more time and money to do that scale up and commercialization. Yeah, in industry, that's where you would actually have that money part come to play. And also, even though things might be cool, so like one research that got some kind of award at Caltech was about the emotions of ants or something like that. 
that's cool but like what can you use that for right <laughs> yeah sure you get a ward but uh, so it's like very difficult it's like a lot of times science is just for the pure knowledge and discovery and that joy of it decades of work and you you get recognized but unfortunately you don't get compensated proportionally for mm-hmm. decades of effort yeah and when you have your own lab a book that actually ironically caltech forced us to read before we were frosh it talked about how difficult funding is to come by these scientists are literally fighting for funding just so they can keep their lab and research alive and this is kind of a societal issue in my opinion yep. now that we've covered the problems let's go into what our best attempt at a solution is which is to do consulting and project management so in consulting i think that i can still use problem solving in a way i'll flame consulting in another video okay trust me it's not all problem solving i also met amazing people who i think are also very ambitious in the business world and more extroverted on average and <laughs> increasing this kind of network where i think suits my personality better uh, i think very similar to what she said about consulting you know project management you get the same perks or very similar perks have you had any really cool skills that you've picked up in project management that you couldn't get in engineering yeah i think you know working and leading cross-functional you sound so um corporate, corporate. <laughs> you know working with teams in other functions and you know learning new skills and learn new ways to interact with people learn new technical skills mm-hmm. and learn how the whole life cycle and the whole process works from mm-hmm. on, a, on a higher level i think that just contrasts with engineering because if you oversee things at a high level to lead and be managerial then you cannot see the details because yeah. you just don't have enough time and effort to do and that. you yeah and, and when you look at things on a higher level you think more strategically versus Versus, you know, mm-hmm. you're looking at one small problem and you go deep and, and see how to solve it. It really broadens your vision and views. Mm-hmm. And also what's interesting about consulting is that oftentimes people tell me they chose consulting because they didn't know what they wanted to do in the future. So consulting was a way to kind of sample out of a bunch of different industries, which is actually another reason why I chose chemical engineering because I felt like that was very versatile and I can go into many different areas. Once you do chemical engineering, you really have a lot of exit opportunities. You know, you can go to traditional chemi industries like oil and gas. You can go to food industries. You can go to pharma industries. Mm-hmm. Or when I was in school, I was actually recruiting for financial services companies and yeah. I actually got an offer. Or you can go into consulting because engineering, you can, um, you have a lot of exit opportunities, mm-hmm. even things that you might not have thought about, mm-hmm. but the opportunities are there. It's not like I regret choosing engineering because think about it, you can go into engineering or business after undergrad, but someone who majored in business cannot go into engineering after undergrad. They just don't have that option. <laughs> Silly. Agree. <laughs> Okay. I like the echo, but I miss it. I miss it. Hold on. One momental pour pour pour. And also in consulting, you can exit to almost any company you can think of because there's always strategy in a company. So you can just do that or like operations. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. When you were talking about consulting, I, I was thinking like the mm-hmm. exiting consulting mm-hmm. back to the industry. Another benefit of consulting that I alluded to is that you can climb the ladder faster. Not to show like I'm just a... Ladder climber. Ladder climber and get more money. <laughs> There must be some kind of negative term. But anyway, my ultimate goal, because I still value science and math and discovery so much, is that to make that sort of impact that I want, that positive impact that I want in, say, medicine or the environment, I hope that with this accelerated path, I can get a leadership position or a role where I can make more like, big things happen from a higher level. Make a bigger impact. Yes, exactly. And faster, hopefully, than I could have if I was just an engineer. And that way, I can actually then vouch for science, perhaps, in consulting one decision would favor the money more than the science, for example, and hopefully... Nah, naive. They'll always favor the money. (laughs) It's difficult, but like, for the greater good, maybe there's some decision that's better for the environment, per se. True, true, true. True. I like that. That's a good point. Yes, that's a good point. Thank you. That's a very good point. I like to echo what you said. <laughs> yeah. So once you're in that leadership position, with that background in science, maybe you can vouch for, you know, something that came out of a scientific research, like say climate change, choose that path instead of just, you know, the path that might bring more money and more profit, but, you know, not great for the environment. Mm-hmm. I don't know if corporate will be that woke. Also, there are other industries that might be a little corrupt. So... <laughs> 
so I can also hopefully make better decisions that help more people if I have a leadership role. So yeah, a lot of times, I, actually, I encourage Amy to get her first job in consulting rather than in, you know, pharma or industry, just kind of, you know, from what I saw, once you go to consulting or these um, more prestigious industry first, when you leave consulting and go back in the industry, you get a much higher title than mm-hmm. people who have worked the same amount of time. So that's one of the perks, even though, yeah, you do work a lot of long hours, you might get burned out, but hey, that's... Uh-huh. Small price to pay. <laughs> A small price to pay. Yes, very key point, critical point. It's his fault that I'm in consulting. I blame it every day. When I'm staying up till like 10 p.m. and he's done at 5, that's his fault. Finally, I wanted to enjoy the journey, not just the result. My dad actually had high hopes for me to win a Nobel Prize or something because Caltech. Asian parents. Yes, if you couldn't tell. So as cool as it would be to be like Francis Arnold or someone like Albert Einstein, (laughs) not that I'm anything on their level, it takes years and years of grueling hard work to get to that point. And it's not like I'm saying hard work is the issue here. It's that hard work is in an area that I don't think I personally would have enjoyed, which is doing one thing or experiments over and over again. And so I think that in making our decisions for career, it's not only about the money or the result. It's that when I chose consulting, I hoped that on a day-to-day basis, I would also enjoy what I'm doing more. Yeah, because engineering, once, you know, if you do a PhD or if you, you know, into one specific subject, you might do tedious work day after day after day. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's how you get the result. You you discover something is after mm-hmm. thousands of failed trials. Mm-hmm. You know, you you see one thing that finally worked. Uh-huh. But yeah. in that process, you just have to do the same thing over and over mm-hmm. and over and over again. I admit, like, even though I have so much admiration for those people, it's kind of showing that, like, I'm just not, I guess, altruistic enough, per se, in that area. Like, even though I want to help people, it's just like, I just don't feel like I would want to put in so much time and effort to something that might not even materialize, because it's pretty rare that you can have some amazing discovery, and a lot of times it happens by accident. Yeah, and if you're lucky, after thousands of fails, failures, you you succeed but for the most people it's tens of thousands mm-hmm. of fails and they never even get to see the, uh-huh. the the result yeah like penicillin too that was an accident in the lab same with viagra mm-hmm. yeah i don't know how, how i knew that but i didn't even know that i just nodded and i had no idea what I was talking about <laughs> but yeah overall it's like i didn't want to force something where like i felt like engineering and science was my flow in life because i was good at it but i don't know it's difficult when it comes to a job because then any job when you do it it's more about like what you do on a day-to-day basis the reality so overall it's another example or kind of aspect that you want to consider about the kind of person you feel like you are or you want to be or you have to weigh two different things anyway thanks very much for sean to join today another uh ex engineer engineer failed engineer unfortunately if you want to watch part one of why i left engineer then click here and i'm fair once i can i'll make a video flaming consulting okay keep an eye out